Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from My Heap, and uh, welcome back to uh, the Burke series. It's been quite some time since uh, I put anything out on the Burke, but you know, I, I need this machine. And uh, I've been uh, given reprieve from my basement project by my wife. She's calling it a squatter's break. Um, I think she's talking about our kids that are living with us. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, what I'm going to start now is uh, uh, I got some other things I want to share with this, but I'll share with later. Um, you know, support in the community has been outstanding on this. I've received lots and lots of pictures uh, when I asked for them. I've um, um, uh, uh, Chirpy uh, from Chirpy's Tinkering and Richard from Making Something from Nothing helped me in a Gib collaboration project. So we got a new Gib for it. It's going to need a little bit of uh, modifying. Um, but nothing that Chirpy done. I think it was just my uh, poor measuring skills. So uh, anyway, uh, this part of the series now is I really want to tear this machine down uh, completely uh, so that it can be stripped, primed, and painted. And uh, the next uh, few videos might be kind of boring for some of you, especially if you already know how one of these come apart. Uh, but this is to help me because remember I'm a, I'm a newbie. Uh, this whole uh, metalworking experience is still fairly new to me. I mean, I've made chips and I've been uh, making some stuff and I'm getting a little bit more comfortable, but there's a couple things that I wanna make that require um, this machine. So uh, this, uh, this video in particular, and maybe the next, uh, it depends on how far I get, is gonna document uh, how I took this thing apart or how it comes apart so that uh, uh, more of a help for me so I can get it back together. All right, so uh, let me get the camera in here a little closer and, and let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the uh, overarm support. Now some of you may have noticed that the table is really, really high. It's because the, uh, the screw that lifts, raises and lowers the knees uh, goes through the base and I wanted it up where it would clear this bench top or this uh, door top that I've got it sitting on. So anyway, uh, to remove the overarm, there should normally be two bolts here that just clamp the overarm in position. Mine are missing, so I would assume you just take those out, then this comes out. Let me point out something here. Um, later when I go to strip and clean this part, you'll see there's a set screw that holds the uh, overarm casting to the shaft, and there's a set screw here, and you can see uh, the center here. This is probably, maybe you can see it. The center here, this has probably just uh, been ground hardened steel. Uh, it's pretty blunt. Uh, probably gonna, I probably might replace that. So anyway, I'm just gonna pull this right out of the casting, out of the column. There we go. And set it off to the side. That's pretty dirty too. Okay, um, let me reposition the camera and we'll start on the next bit. Okay, the next thing I think I'd want to logically take apart would be uh, the drive mechanism. Now, normally this plate is bolted here. You have a telescoping drive arm that connects to this pulley and then runs up to this yoke. Okay, so now um, this was off when I got it, but there are a couple pins here. It looks like they were probably pinned together with. Those actually kind of look like, yeah, they're just roll pens. All right, so I would take that off. And uh, and then I'll concentrate here on this this in here. So let me uh, let me see if I can make sure I get the camera in a decent position and and uh, let's let's do that. Okay, the next bit I want to take off is the uh, this is the table stop. This is what uh, catches and releases the uh, auto feed. So this is a, uh, I think it's a 3 16ths, yep, 3 16ths uh, Allen key here and two Allen screws. Okay, now I'm going to pause the camera. I'm going to put the Allen screws back into the table just so that uh, I know where they come from and I don't misplace them. All 
All right, so uh, let me get a little storage bin to put some stuff in and then I'll bring you right back. Okay, the next thing I wanna take off is the, um, the table auto feed mechanism. This uh, casting consists of a, a worm and a worm wheel. And uh, now I don't know if normally it would come off this way, but my worm is not, uh, there's a place for a key, but my wheel uh, doesn't have a key in it. So, uh, it's, which should allow it just to slip right off. I just don't get all that grease on my fingers. So there's two uh, cap head screws. That hold this on. Okay, and sure enough, okay, now that I see that, there is a Allen set screw on the, uh, on the worm. I don't know if I can see that. Right, yeah, there's an Allen, uh, there's a set screw on the worm. There is a key in the worm and a place on the shaft for the key. Now I'm just gonna put this here in with a table feed, in my table feed bucket. And again, I'm just gonna put these back into the table casting so I know where they're at. Of course all this has to really be thoroughly cleaned up and but we'll get there. Okay, so let me uh, let me reposition the camera and uh, figure out the next bit to get the table off. Okay, as I was poking and looking around the nut uh, is affixed to the to the uh, uh, saddle. Um, so, but the lead screw is free, so I'm just going to unscrew the lead screw. This might take a bit, depending on how long these threads are. Okay, so the lead screws out, and I think I can just slide the table off. So let me slide it off from the other side here. Okay, so it's not going to come off that way. I think I might have to remove the gib first. It's got a pretty good sized gib. Not sure what size this is. Oh, there's no gib screws in it. Okay. So I think I would, at this point, pull the gib screws, pull the gib out, and it's a regular flat gib, tapered. Uh, not tapered lengthwise, just the tops are tapered. So now I think I should be able to, yeah. All right, so there's the table is off. All right, so let me uh, reposition the uh, camera and we'll do the next bit. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is take the saddle off. And uh, remember we have this gib and there's uh, just two nuts that hold this on. It's the gib that uh, Chirpy made. Chirpy, thank you. You've done a great job on it, man. All right, two nuts. Of course, it would be a venture putting this machine back together, considering you know, I'm not real sure um, Okay, I tell you what, let me come back to that. Alright, so uh, let me bring you in over here at the other side so you can see what we got over here. Okay, so on this side of the saddle we have the, uh, the uh, nut. Um, that that drives the saddle with its screw and it's held on with uh, two allen headed bolts okay and that just drops down so now over here on the other side I've grabbed the uh, pulled the gib out 
and hopefully this is in view I can take the saddle off of the machine okay let me get these uh, uh, screws where they need to go and reposition the camera and bring you right back in okay the next thing I'm going to disassemble is the feed screw assembly for the saddle and uh, so the feed handle uh, has a set screw but it also has a uh, uh, a Woodruff key this is pretty chowdered up and I don't have the key but there's a nut uh, on this screw that has a hole in it and if you poke that you'll see that's a that's just a threaded on nut which will allow the lead screw to pass through and then of course I'm going to pull the handle off here and now I also have a uh, little metal collar okay uh, it's got a I don't know it's got a groove in it I, I don't know I don't know if this is this looks like just something somebody stuck on there I think uh, there's a line here on the uh, on the casting for the zero indicator this is marked so if somebody's got a picture of this right here if you have a Burke number four shoot that spot right here for me if you would also there's a set screw right here that locks the uh, the screw in so I'll have to spin this out the nut off of it a left-handed thread looks like uh, 10 TPI All right, so that's uh, there's the nut off of the screw and back in the screw out. So I'm just going to put this nut back on, just so all these bits and pieces are together. You know how that goes. This stuff is uh, pretty dirty. Just thread the nut back on there. and just put that somewhere as a, as a unit. Okay, so I think we're getting close to uh, trying to pull the knee. Let me take a good close look at that and I'll bring you back in. Okay, I'm not uh, sure the best way to take this off, so I'm gonna actually try to take the lead screw, if that's what you call that, jack screw, whatever that is. Maybe somebody can tell me, remember I am new. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna disconnect it from the uh, from the base casting, uh, base base of the column casting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna undo the gib, and I'm thinking that I could just take this whole unit off, uh, so I can get a good look in the inside of the bevel gears and how they're done. So let me uh, let me get these screws out. Hopefully you can see. I'm gonna keep my fingers out of the way. As you know, I might have to be watching this later to figure out how this thing goes back together. So there's three uh, dome head, uh, socket head screws. Of course, I'll put those back in the column casting. Okay, that's those. So that, in theory, should be loose. I'll take out my Gibbs screws. These are 916 heads. So, as I make them 3 8 maybe, something like that. I'll take out the top and the bottom one so it's manageable. I don't know. I don't know how bad my hands are in the way. Okay, I want to support the casting here as I. Pull the other one out here. I have to hold the gib too. So I got pressure holding on the gib from the back as I'm pulling this, this last bolt out. Okay. And all right, there's the gib. And sure enough, it all come out as a unit. 
and we'll take a closer look at that later. All right, so let me uh, figure out the next bit and bring the camera in for a better view. So let's see what we're going to do next. Okay, so I've uh, turned the machine around, so we're looking at the back of it now. So I think the next part I'm going to take off is this is the uh, the pulley that drives the auto feed and a bell goes from here to here and I think a spring or something holds that in tension. Okay, so that's a 7 8 nut. Let's see what we got here. Looks like maybe there should be a spacer or something back here. I'm, there's a lock nut, two washers. I mean, uh, not a lock washer. Another nut. Okay, and then that just slides off. Alright, so. That's got that. Alright, so let me uh, take a close look at the spindle here. And I uh, tell you what I want. That doesn't come out, so I'm just... I'm going to stick all that crap back on there so it's together. And I think probably what it needs is just a spacer. It's probably a spacer or something that goes there rather than all that crap. And maybe a couple lock nuts. So we'll have to, I'll have to take a look at some of the exploded diagrams and see what we got going on. Alright, so let me, uh, let me pause the camera and take a good look at the spindle and see if we figure out how it comes out. So I'll bring you back in in a bit. Okay, so the next bit is uh, the spindle. And as I look at this, uh, there's a, a front cover that's held on with three screws. Now I'm missing the screws and it will just slide off. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide that off. And there's a set screw that should hold the pulley. This has been backed off, right? It's already loose, but I'm gonna back it off some more because I'm not the one that loosened that up. I'm just going to make sure this is good and loose. I think this is a B size pulley. It's a bigger than pretty much anything I've kind of goofed around with. Matter of fact, I'm just going to pull that out. Okay, now uh, one thing that I want to say about this is that uh, the spindle is pulled in this way the spindle play is adjusted by these two lock nuts pushing against the pulley which pushes against the block that pulls the spindle in tension all right so take these off there's there's two jam nuts pretty good sized jam nuts that have to come off and hopefully i'm not blocking the view too bad and again, if this stuff is boring, I'm sorry, but you know, a month from now or whenever I, you know, reach the point where I got to start putting it back together, I'm the one that's got to know how to put it back together. So, and I'm a newbie. All right, so there's two jam nuts and then the pulley slides off. Okay, it is keyed. So let me pop this key out. All right, and then we have this plastic bit that's got three screws that holds it in just like would be on the front end other than um, the screws were already out so that one's a little stiff this whole thing needs a good cleaning Another one over here. Hopefully, I'm not got my head in the way. Maybe not. All right, and then this plastic cover comes off, and then there's also a steel. Let's see if I can grab that. See, I just pulled out with the bearing. That's packed full of grease. Let me set this back off over here to the side. All right. The spindle then will slide out the front. Let me go ahead and grab this bearing. Well, that's a nasty dog. 
Okay, the uh, other bearing is coming out with the front of the spindle. Now, here is where it's going to prove interesting because I got to get this pulley to slide. Okay, so I'm just going to I'm going to fight with I'm going to clean this up here a little bit so that maybe I can get this pulley to shaft. You guys don't need, I mean pulley to slide along the shaft a little bit. You guys don't really need to see that, so I'll bring you back in uh, when I have it loose where I can pull it out. Okay, so I uh, polished up the shaft a little bit. There were some a couple set screw burrs, so this now slides along here, which should allow me to pull the spindle out. And there it went. Okay. So the spindle is now out of the machine. We'll have to take a look at it after a while when we get to that part. For right now, we'll just set it back off here to the side. And maybe we won't get grease all over all over the place. Or maybe we will. I don't know. All right, so uh, let me wipe off some of the excess grease. And uh, I'll bring you back in. Okay, so everything is stripped off of the column now. I mean, there's a few miscellaneous screws stuck in there because I don't want to misplace them. The only thing left that I see are four bolts that hold the base to uh, the chip pan or drip pan, or the column to the drip pan or chip pan. Uh, one bolt, by the way, was missing. Uh, these are three quarter inch and I've loosened these up. So, Sure enough, the uh, column is free from the uh, from the chip pan. Okay, so I have this thing completely disassembled now, and I'm gonna go ahead and post this so people can see that I'm working on it. Um, in the next video, I think probably uh, I'll start uh, uh, stripping, priming, and painting the chip pan, and uh, we'll, I'm only gonna show. I'm only going to show one component being uh, done, you know, cleaned and, and stripped and painted and all that sort of stuff. Because if you see one, you see it all. It's all the same, right? Other than uh, covering various uh, machine services. So, uh, all right. Well, I got a couple things I want to say in closing, and, uh, and then we'll finish this video up. So, all right. Well, you know what? That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Now, you know. Um, I got this thing, it was mostly, I mean, it was uh, sort of in parts, you know, there were parts and uh, some I've assembled trying to figure out how it goes back together and that sort of stuff, but uh, I've taken apart uh, what I have. Now, you more experienced uh, Burke owners, if you notice something really odd or weird about my machine or something like that, um, shoot me an email, either to Xavier at gtech.com, uh, you can find that on, on my about uh, link on uh, my uh, YouTube page or you can go to my website myheap.com and click uh, contact and, and you can email me there too. So um, I guess that's about it. I'm the next, Like I said, uh, I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me and uh, especially the patience for the people that have been wanting to see this project get going. People like uh, uh, Peter from PGS. I know he's uh, been looking forward to it as as were a couple of other people so hopefully uh since i am on uh see what did my wife call that um squatters leave squatters vacation something like that you know i think she's talking about my kids i don't know well our kids <laughs> who knows uh <laughs> now um so i guess i'm going to close this one here uh this has gone for a while and uh hey guys Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for your support. Hey, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If not, put it down. You're not going to hurt my feelings. It's got really thick skin. Okay? Uh, but if they entertain you, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Okay? And uh, other than that, have a blessed day.